in Manila, in Philippines they stay in Manila. So uh, then I have uh, three grandsons through my daughter-in-law. Uh, they are quarter Filipino. Okay, half. Okay, uh, my my uh, my daughter-in-law is half Filipino. Then her children will be quarter Filipino. <laughs> All, right. All right, but still the Filipino blood is there. Praise the Lord. All right, praise God. Now uh, I want to bring to you a very important message this morning about prayer brings changes. Okay, uh, we know that uh, there is uh, power in prayer. Okay, and before I share this word of God, I pray that you will uh, give your full attention, and I believe that uh, the Lord is going to touch uh, someone here. Okay, uh, He knows what you are going through. He knows uh, your uncertainty in your heart. He knows there are certain fears and worries about what is coming. Okay, what you are facing. But I want to assure you that, you know, God is always with you. God cares for you. And He knows what is the solution for the coming things that you are going to face. Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you for this wonderful time. We thank you, Lord, that you are here with us. We believe, oh God, that your spirit is moving in us. We believe that, Jesus, you will be glorified in our midst, oh God. Father, we also believe that there are angels here always, O oh Lord God, to help in the ministering, O oh Lord God. Father, we take authority over every spirit, O oh God, of heaviness. We bind and we break that power in Jesus' name. And we also speak, O oh Lord God, uh, to every spirit, O oh God, that try to put doubts, unbelief and negativeness in us, O oh God. Lord, we resist all this and we bring every thought every argument of God into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Amen. Father, we ask that the Holy Spirit will have the uh, freedom to minister to us, Amen. freedom to speak to us personally, Lord. Yes, we ask all this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Now, there are two things, there are two things that Satan is very afraid of in regards to Okay? In, in regards to the Christian life, right? Two things, okay? If you remember these two things and you develop in this two area, okay, you are going to be a threat to the kingdom of darkness. You are going to walk in the power of God. You are going to walk in the fear of God. And you are going to walk, okay? Okay, in the authority that the devil is really, really afraid of. Okay? But because of these two areas that are so threatening to him okay, and his kingdom, okay, I'm talking about Satan and the demons, therefore, they will do their best okay, to stop you from establishing your life in these two areas. They are going to stop you okay, from growing in these two areas. Okay. Now, these are the two areas. Okay. Those who know the truth and obey it. Right? Those who know the truth and obey it. Not just knowing the truth. Not just hearing the truth. Okay. I know many of us, we have been Christian for a long, long time. Okay. You talk about Bible knowledge, you know a lot of knowledge. Okay. Talk about hearing sermons. Uh, some of you, you may be hearing sermons since you, know, you are a young kid. Okay, you have been hearing and hearing sermons after sermons. Okay, but how come so many Christians, okay, they have been hearing the word of God so long and yet they are not growing strong spiritually, yet they are not maturing, yet they are not walking in courage and in power and they are still feel full of fear, full of anxiety, full of negativeness. They're full of worries in their life. It is because the word that they hear is just remain in the ear and in the mind. But it did not go down into their heart. It did not go down into their lifestyle. Right? So Satan is not afraid of how many sermons that you have heard. He's only afraid that when you know the truth and you obey it, that is something that he will try to stop you from reading the Word of God. Many of us, okay, including some of my church members, 
they don't like to read the word of God. They thought that you know every Sunday pastor give one message is enough for the whole week. It's not enough. Okay? Whatever you receive from the Sunday service, from our pastors, they are just supplement. They are not the main meal. Main meal is come from when we spend time personally with God, open up our Bible, read the word of God with an open heart and say, God, speak to me. Teach me what are the things that I need to know and what how to apply it in my life. I want that. Now, when your prayer is like this, and your readiness to practice the Word of God, your life will be transformed. Okay? We do not want to just receive information from the Bible. We want to experience transformation in our life through the reading of the Word and obeying it. Now, God wants Every Christian, including you and me, we have to grow in the grace and the knowledge of God. Okay? And through that, when Satan sees that you, know, you are reading the word of God, he will do all his best, try to stop you from reading the word of God. Therefore, many Christians, they say that, I wanted to read the word of God, but I got no time. But we got time to watch all other things, movies, you know. We got time, you know, go shopping. We got time, you know, talking nonsense. We have got time gossiping. We got time to do all kind of other things, you know. But when coming to the Word of God, we say, ah, no time. Even when you found some time, you start to get very tired, sleepy. When you don't read the Word of God, wow, you are full of energy, doing so many other things. But when coming to the Word of God or coming to prayer, you start to be very tired. Okay? You, you felt like, God, I need some rest. So you take your rest. After your rest, you forget about reading the Word of God. You start to do other things already. So many times, we miss out the Word of God. Now, in Deuteronomy 29, 29, okay, it's not on the screen. Uh, you can write it down. It says this, whatever things has been Reveal to you from the word of God belongs to you. Whatever thing is still secret belongs to the Lord. Now, what does it mean? Okay, it really means that you know it is important to know the word of God, to know the revelation of the word, so that when we read the word, we start to understand it, we start to believe it, then that particular principle, that particular promises, that particular truth belongs to you. You can experience it throughout your life as a Christian. But anything that you have read, you cannot understand. Don't worry. It's not time yet for you to understand that. The secret it still belongs to the Lord. But as you continue to seek the Lord, continue to pray, God, I, I want to know you more. I want to exercise the Word of God. I want to practice it. That will become your possession. Okay? Like some people, they walk in divine health. They walk in divine healing. When they have, they, they know by the stripes of Jesus, they are healed. Like our brother Albert. Okay? He shared his testimony. Okay? Now, doesn't mean that he will not experience sicknesses or illness attacking him, he will experience, but he knows he will be healed. He knows he will experience the power of God. He knows he will experience the recovery and the restoration of health. Because why? The word of God inside him, by his wound, by his stripes, I am healed. Okay? So you can expect healings to come. Right? So the word of God is very important. There are so many things to talk about the Word of God, but I want to talk to you about prayer. Okay? Prayer is another area that devil is very afraid. He doesn't afraid of people who pray, but he only afraid of people who know how to pray. Some people, they pray, but they pray with doubt. They pray with unbelief. They pray with all kinds of worries, you know, fear and uncertainty. But those who know how to pray, 
They pray with hope. They pray with expectation. They pray with faith. They pray with confidence. They pray knowing the will of God. Amen. And these are the people who know how to pray that really make Satan and demon tremble. They will be afraid. Anytime when you start praying, anytime when you fall on your knee to pray, they will say, uh oh, uh oh, we are in trouble now. We are in trouble now. This guy, this woman, okay, don't play play. Okay? This is a dangerous woman. This is a dangerous man. Okay? They are going to expose us. They are going to kick us out from their situation. They are going to crush us. Okay? Upon our attacks upon him and upon her and their family. Prayer. Now, this is important. And therefore also, knowing that prayer is so powerful that it's going to be against His kingdom of darkness, He will also do all His best. Okay? Working against you, trying to stop you from praying, don't allow you to enter into the realm of prayer. So when you start to pray, Satan got a lot of strategies, right? His strategies is, oh, suddenly you are yawning, you feel very tired, you feel very sleepy. Okay. Now, there are times, you know, believers, okay, when they pray alone, they got no strength. When they pray together, they find a little bit strength. Because why? Uh, the, the, the energy that uh, they rub on others who are prayerful, you know, they also get stirred up. Okay. But when they are on their own, they find it a big struggle to pray. Okay. And they, they, are, they are being oppressed and they feel so tired and they give up praying. And that is the strategy of the, of the enemy. But believers doesn't realize, they are not conscious of the things in the spirit, they're not very conscious. Okay? They just thought that, yeah, I am tired because I'm lack of sleep for the past few days. But do you know that when you really enter into prayer, not only your spirit is energized, your physical body also being energized. Okay? Being energized until you can find yourself every day, 24 hours, you may sleep only 5-6 hours, and yet, you are still full of energy. Yet, you are still being revitalized okay, physically. But if we have a thought that say, one day I must sleep 8 to 10 hours, so your, your reasoning is already so firm that the Word of God says, no, you can overcome that. You will argue with the Word of God. Okay? You will suppress the truth. When you suppress the truth, then you will miss out the chance to experience the power of the truth. And that's where okay, we have to be very open-minded. Holy Spirit, help 